We've arrived at track 7, the last part of the introduction live set. This device appends a symbol for every played note to the name of the clip that's currently playing on the same track. We can hear 4 and 5 note chords, so each of the lines represents a note. The character that symbolizes the notes can be changed here. The purpose of this device is to demonstrate the possibility of getting information from and controlling parameters of Live's user interface outside of the Max for Live device. The left part of the patch handles incoming MIDI notes. The notes are transformed and appended to the clip name in the append to name subpatcher. Let's head to the playing clip name subpatcher to see how this device controls live. The patch starts at the top with the live.thisdevice object. The left outlet of this object outputs a bang whenever this device is loaded in the live set. This bang initializes the rest of the patch downstream. As we've briefly discussed while looking at track 5, most user interface elements or parameters in Live's UI have an ID number. When this device initializes, the live.path object looks up the ID of the parent of this device, which is track 7. This ID is then fed into the right inlet of the live.observer object so that it knows what track it should report the index number of the currently playing clip of. The index number is then sent downstream, where live.path looks up the ID of the clip, so that further downstream we can use that clip ID to get the name of the clip. Instead of appending the note symbols to the clip name, let's skip over a part of this patch and append the symbols to the track name instead. Since we have the ID of the track, we can grab this patch cable by hovering over it and clicking the small red circle and drag it down here instead. Now, when we hold Ctrl or Command and click the message box, we can change the ID the live.object object object is controlling from the clip name to the track name. We then get the name, send it downstream, combine the name with the symbols, and then feed that message back into the playing clip name subpatcher, where we then set the track's name. To summarize, the entire right part of this subpatcher is initialized once when the device first loads, so that the live.object will know which object in live it should get and ultimately set a property of.